point in my life where I know exactly what I want. There's no room for confusion for me no more. We not getting no younger. We getting older. I don't got time for people to come up to me and they unsure about wanting a relationship with me. Whether it's family wise, friends wise, relationship wise. I don't have time for unsure people to be around me. Unsure people cause a lot of confusion and it wastes a lot of your time. You waste a lot of giving your love to these people that don't even deserve it. I'm at a point in my life where you gonna come to the table with 50 and I got the other 50 to make us 100. If not, don't even stop at this bus stop because you will not get picked up. I'ma leave you right where you at. And let me tell you this, if you gonna come in my life, know what you want out of me in life. Whether you want it, whether it's receiving love from me, wanting a relationship, a friendship with me, wanting a relationship with me. Other than that, if you don't know what you want, don't come around me being unsure. Don't come around me laying all these problems on me. Don't come around me giving me all this emotional distress and you don't even know if you gonna stay around. I don't got time for unsure people. And if you ain't got, if you don't know, if you, matter of fact, if you feeling unsure about me in any shape, way, or form, stay right where you at. Cause I cut you up before you cut me off. For the wall. For the wall. So um, I'm in that phase where I'm really looking for someone who's in a mature phase. I'm here to tell you right now, we don't care. I'm ready to settle down. Um, even though um, I'm still, you know, on the young side, still living my life, I do want someone who has um, the plans to have a committed relationship with God. Um, but still able to have a good time because I feel like that's important too. That's important too. Okay. Okay. What are your deal breakers? Deal breaker for me is jailbirds. Stop the cap. Crazy baby mamas and um, no ambition. Okay. They're telling me to go to your page. What's on your page? Why do they want me to go to your page? Okay. You said, do I, I want you to go to my page? No, they're asking me to go to your page. So oh, why yes. are they asking me to Please go to your do. page? Please do. Yes. What's on your page it's that they want me to see? Um, just, just a little inside of my life. Stop the cap. Um, let me Good see symptoms. where I'm about to my find fashion, out. Everyone, my style, Everyone's saying, aesthetic. Kendra, what is it, red snow? Yes, red snow. All right, let's see what they want me to see. Um, okay, this is your page that they want me to see. Yes. Yes. That's me. Okay. Um, oh, you have an OnlyFans page. Yes, I do. I'm a little rusty and retired on the OnlyFans, but yes. What's this picture? That's a massage. massage. It's a neuro massage. That ain't no damn massage. Yeah. That it's is a neuro massage. massage. That, I, I ain't never get no massage like that from somebody that I wasn't having sex with. This ain't no, no massage. Yes, I promise it is. Cal. What? What is what? Yes. <laughs> Look, if I'm not your dream girl, leave me alone. If you don't look at me like I am a literal goddess, come to this earth to change your life, I don't want it. I have spent too much of my life settling for people who think the grass is always going to be greener. I have wasted so much time and energy thinking people will get there, and I'm not doing it anymore. So if I'm not your dream girl, if we're not about to build our dream life, leave me the fuck alone. Viral attention for sharing her regrets about ditching the idea of marriage and family. Now, her article in Business Insider reads, quote, I'm 38 and single, and I recently realized I want a child. I'm terrified that I've missed my opportunity. This is a place that no female can come back from. And a lot of times, females don't realize it until they're there because they always have this belief that everything they want can be given to them until it's taken away from them and they can't get it no more and that's the realization is that you can't get everything that you want especially if you didn't take the time to prioritize it that woman's name is melissa persling and she's revealing to fox news digital what she thinks caused her current situation listen i feel unbelievably betrayed by feminism i was constantly fed this idea that Women can do everything. We don't really need men. Women can, women can have the great career and, and have the kids that they like and change the tires and do this. I mean, I grew up thinking and men are great, but like I can do all the same things. I do feel in many ways betrayed by that line of thinking. 
Many females out there are in this position and have been betrayed by feminism. Sad thing is, most of them haven't even realized it yet. They all still think they're winning in the name of feminism. I kind of want to go back to some of those, some of those teachers and coaches and, and say, what the hell did you mean by that? Because women can't do it all. I, we can't. Katrina, what are your thoughts on this? Okay, I'm going to go deep here. So I have a lot of opinion on this, and I really think that feminism in some ways has really sabotaged women's happiness. And the reason I believe that is because we are asked to do all these different things, right? Feminism has destroyed females happiness because more females are on antidepressants than ever in history. More females are selling their bodies, entering in adult work than ever in history. Marriage rates and childbirth are lower than it ever has been in history. And meanwhile, other females are asking females to do more than any man ever has. But welcome to feminism. But then our nervous system goes whack. Like I know for myself, I'm in work mode and then mother mode and then family mode, right? And so your system just completely goes out of whack, which is why I truly believe, and I found this quote and I thought it was so telling, is that the divine feminine is the rawest, wildest, and most honest mirror a man will ever encounter. The awakened man opens his heart and goes to battle. He will tame his dragons and face his deepest shadows since he knows that deep within her heart will guide him home. And I think that there is a beautiful balance between the feminine and the masculine energy. And I know that as a woman, regardless of what any woman says, I think she wants to feel safe with a man and she wants to be able to feel her feminine energy, but it's very difficult to go into that space when you're trying to fulfill all these different roles, which is what I think this woman is feeling right now, which is what I think a lot of women, right, in very powerful positions are feeling. And then there's this idea that if you're powerful, you can't be, you know, a beautiful wife mm. or a beautiful mother. And so I think we need to go back to really the way God designed us to be, which is as women, we, we need men. She said this as though she's a rocket scientist. Of course women need men, and men need women, otherwise we wouldn't have survived the beginning of time. Women need men to be providers, protectors, producers and builders. Men need women to produce babies, be a mother, teach, lead and protect the young. It's simple logic, not rocket science, nor is it feminism and it makes for a beautiful balance. Chris, something that struck me about this is something that Katrina mentioned earlier, which is your influences start in the home. So my, my, the moral of this story to me was that she felt betrayed by her influences. But if she had been influenced a certain way in the home, then there wouldn't have been confusion. Does that make sense? It does, and, yeah. and I, I really like the points uh, you, you just made. I, I think that, um, you know, this is a little bit of a, a weird topic for me to talk about, but I, you know, we grew up with parents. I grew up with parents that had my brother and I when they were in their early 20s. OK, and that was a that was their decision. That was great. Um, my wife, Lily, uh, decided to uh, she, she's an entrepreneur. She built her business in her early 20s and early 30s. And we didn't have kids till we were in our mid 30s. And she struggled with this uh, early on a little bit. But mm -hmm. this is where I think as a man and as her husband and her protector, I take my personal responsibility to be her greatest advocate and her greatest cheerleader for everything that she's doing, everything that she's accomplished, everything she has to balance as a woman. Uh, and, I, and I think more men should take that responsibility. Not that I'm on this high horse or anything. I'm just saying I do think that it's a, the role of a man to do that. So I have to cancel the singles event that I planned to be on my farm this weekend. Y'all know I'm an event planner and I have a fish farm and I advertised a fishing for love event where singles could come here and fish and have dinner and meet each other in person, not on a dating app. And five women RSVP'd yes, and one man. And even the one man that did RSVP did it through one of the ladies. Now I did all of my marketing specifically towards men because I knew that the women would RSVP. I promoted the event on 45 different Facebook groups. <laughs> specifically about hunting, fishing, 
camping, country life, and all local to my area. I know that my post reached over 12,000 people specific to the age group, the gender, and the interest that I just described. And yet, no man RSVP'd. All, all, all women hit the wall. So let's talk about why men are not RSVPing and attending these singles meetings. <laughs> Pulling it down with the same pressure applied throughout the entire pull, so you don't come off prematurely, otherwise you end up with a thickness at the bottom. So then, it gets longer and longer. <laughs> oh, Florian! <laughs> that's the usual reaction. <laughs> Crikey, that's massive! <laughs> On social media, we're saying, Tiffany shouldn't have cracked jokes about finding a man in Israel. I, I got to say, in our morning meeting, it's like she's a comedian for crying out loud. But I want to at least give you a chance to to talk about that. I'm here all by myself, just like I was saying in 2018 when they was asking me about Monique and her husband, and I said I don't do my business the way she does business because I don't have a husband. I don't have what she has, right? I don't, I'm all alone. That's what I'm trying to tell you guys. Like I'm doing this all by myself. I'm not. I don't have. I don't have a, a whole family full of men. Or a man supporting me. I'm doing it on my own. I'm learning on my own. So for like, for people to say like, I, I have to make light of something that the average female wouldn't do. The average female wouldn't have the courage to go see for themselves. It's a lot of scary out here. And y'all can be scared, but I'm going to go ahead and follow my instincts and learn as much as I can learn. How old are you? 40. 40? Yeah. You got a kid? Absolutely, yeah. No man's coming to pay your bills. I'm not going to no. lie to you. First of all, you're 40. But I don't look 40, so that doesn't matter. It matters. It don't. You know why it matters? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Please because, tell no, me why. Because you don't look 40, mm -hmm. but there's somebody who actually is not 40. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go pay her bills because mm -hmm. she's not 40. She doesn't have any kids. When I'm speaking on the men, I mean the men you want. Not okay. just the guy that's a fuck around that you like, I don't even want to take serious. We're speaking on a guy that you want. But there are still those ones, those certain guys that don't go by that same thing. Men will sit here and tell you, this is how we think. Mm -hmm. You guys will say, no, it's not. This is how you think. But you're a woman uh -huh. telling men how, to think. how we think. You got this guy over here. He can pay all your bills. You got this guy over here. He lives with his mom on the couch. Which, which one are you picking? If you got the choice. I'm definitely going to choose an independent one. I'm not going to choose a guy that's still staying with his mom. Right. A woman with a kid is the equivalent of the guy that stays with his no, mom. It's, how? How? Yes, it is. I'm ashamed uh -huh. to say this, but if I were to take a lover, he'd have to be 20. Really? Oh, yeah. Now, why specifically Because 20? I don't like old skin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I'm right there with you. I'm doing everything I can to keep it fresh, but... Master, two seconds, one second. This is going to be a vulnerable post, and I hope that you guys give me the grace and space to talk about how I feel because I don't think it's an uncommon feeling, and I also want to know if anybody else can identify with it. Being single is starting to feel like a punishment, and this is coming from somebody who generally really does enjoy being single. <laughs> And I really value my solitude. Now, I think there are a few things that are playing into this feeling. I can definitely identify that for me personally, I think the emotion is coming from a place where I am longing for somebody else to really care for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm longing for somebody to really want me. I'm longing for somebody to be interested in me genuinely. And before y'all say it, I am in therapy. I've been in therapy for over a year now and it does work wonders. And I do love myself. I pour into myself, I'm selfish. Um, and I have done the work to actually decenter men and relationships but I am still simultaneously wanting companionship. I think the second thing at play for me is never being anybody's first choice. <laughs> and it's just so conflicting because I understand that male validation is a check that you can never cash, but that doesn't take away the human desire I have to be wanted. 
And I would like to be wanted by somebody who is a peer, not an older man that just wants somebody younger than him and definitely not somebody who feels like they're settling for me. There are so many other reasons I don't think I can fit them all in one video. So let me know if y'all want a part two. But the last point I'm gonna leave you guys on for me is just sheer loneliness. I have an amazing friend group. I have great family and I am always in good company with myself. But I feel like over time being single, there is a really large part of myself that I constantly have to suppress. And it makes me sad that I don't get to use that piece of myself often enough. That is a desire to nurture somebody, to love somebody, to care for somebody, and just be vulnerable with somebody. I think the first thing a lot of females need to stop doing is lying to themselves. It's always telling themselves that I don't need a man. I've desensitized men around me. I'm fine. I'm happy. I have people around me. But all at the same time, your emotion contradicts what you're saying. Your loneliness contradicts what you're saying. And I find a lot of females always try to save face by telling themselves that everything is okay. I'm just looking for a man, but everything is not okay. The fact that you do not have a man, the fact that you don't have a family, the fact that you don't have a husband is really making you feel unfulfilled in life. Even though you have all the things that you say you have, it still makes you feel unfulfilled. And I think that's the first step a lot of females need to take and also acknowledge and be real about. I'm happy. I know y'all didn't dress up, but I'm happy to be a hoe today. You know what I'm saying? I'm a proud hoe because in real life, I'm older. So, you know, you can't be just out dressing like this shit when you get older, you know? For real, I'm in my early 40s. Well, you shouldn't. <laughs> Ma'am. <laughs> Auntie. <laughs> That's our problem. We don't know when to say when, you know? I would say at around the age of 45, I started noticing that the way I was perceived was slightly different than what I had become used to. And then I would put photos of myself in bikinis. All of a sudden I started getting uh, the influx of, are you a little desperate there, grandma? Uh, how about you cover up and spare us the look of your poor aging body? I was sort of getting relinquished to the invisible women category. <laughs> we have to be self-aware, you know? This is for the dress up shit. In real life, you gotta stick to shit your age, you know? Just wanna dress like this and hit the club, bitch. We, these could be our kids in this club. We gotta do shit that go with us, you know? We gotta go to like comedy shows. <laughs> yeah, you gotta know where to say when, bitch. Our coochie cutter days are over. No more Capital Beach. Forever 21 was a lie. We in our 40s now. Say down. Stop playing with yourself. I have some reservations and I know you have spoken about women who are over 30. I'm over 30 and I'm unmarried. But I'm very happy. I don't feel like I'm missing anything. You know, you don't miss what you don't have. You've not tested marriage. And that's why you think you're not missing it. You are happy, so you say. Very sing. happy, actually. But deep within you, are you really happy? <laughs> I'm very happy. I feel there's so much more to do than being married. She belongs to the streets. And I'm very happy for those that are married. I'm very happy for those who found it early or those who found it at any point in time in their lives. But deep within, I feel so complete. Why are you always lying? With myself. Okay, free. I that's feel the word. Um, maybe you not want to be free. Fuck, I'm tired. And it's like, I'm not even getting my back broken enough the way that I need to to be going through the shit that I'm going through. It's like the amount of stress that I'm taking on is not being countered out by the amount of So remember I told y'all I had one more talk of stage in me, one more relationship, and that was it. I think I'm through. 
I think I'm through. I can't even get to the to the, uh talking stage because everybody not looking for nothing serious, not looking for a relationship, not looking for a girlfriend. What you looking for, a homeboy? Oh no no no! They're looking for somebody they can just and have no obligations and no commitments to. Which I don't know who the fuck they look for. Cause I give all the life over here. I'm tired. I'm tired of just you know what I'm saying having a good time with somebody and then kicking them out of my house because I don't do sleepovers and move-ins. That's one thing. I'm trying to, you know what I'm saying, cook breakfast for somebody, ask somebody how they like their eggs. <laughs> I want somebody to be asking me what I'm cooking for dinner tonight and tell me they coming for a plate. I'm trying to go out and know, everybody know I got a plus one because they know I go everywhere with my men. It's giving, why? What's wrong? What's wrong? All, all, all women hit the wall. No, no, no one cares. Can the man just come to the check and y'all come talk to me for a second? Like, we don't care. Me, what is it? It can't be the goals. I got goals too. All right, let me tell you <laughs> We don't care. Jerry. Yo, you need to learn how to delegate your feelings and compartmentalize what the f you got going on. Y'all need to learn priorities. Learn how to communicate. You got to hang with a bitch every day. I just be, here's my thing. I really would like to know like so y'all get get into the comments y'all let me know but i just i it's an epidemic it's an epidemic what they say it's an epidemic get the right it's an epidemic of these men not wanting to be the man in the relationship do you understand what i'm saying they do want to get their dicks wet that's that's clear we got that covered y'all want y'all want a hunch but y'all don't want to do anything else, which is for me is very confusing. Because they'll be like, oh, I don't want a relationship. But I mean, we could we could chill and watch movies and stuff and hang out and go out to dinner and things like that. But like, I don't want a relationship. What the f What's the relationship to y'all? Because for me, if all we doing, baby, don't ask me how my day was. You call me when you want some coochie and I'm going to call you when when it's vice versa. I know how to have a sneaky link. I know how to have a friend with benefits. But I don't want one right now. I want um, me. I want somebody to come and let's join together and we build something together. <laughs> Women. Can we work on our goals together, babe? Because when we're in a marriage, we still need to be able to flow individually together. And I'm in Atlanta. That's I, I forgot to leave that as the context. I'm just I'm having issues. I'm having issues. Just bear with me, y'all. Just bear. Just please, just bear with me. For the wall. For the wall. <laughs> Why aren't you married? Why don't you? When are you going to have kids? How come nobody wiped you up? First of all, a wife is different than being wiped up. Come Let's on. get maybe I didn't choose. It's not that somebody didn't choose me. Maybe I ran away for seven years because I already seen the bullshit coming. So this song addressed that, addresses that. Not everybody wants the same thing when the world wants it for them. But I also clear up the fact that I'm open to additions. But I'm not here for the subtractions in my life because I've also experienced that. And so now I'm just on a journey of self-love, of self-care so that I show up as my best self. And I do believe in a lot of the universal laws and the law of attraction and making sure that I attract nothing short of the best me, too. I'm not on y'all's time. I'm, I'm, on God's time. <laughs> I'm, I'm on God's time. And I give it to God. Yes. I'm just working on me. Mean that I'm not open to a wonderful husband. I just I let things flow when the time is right. You know. Guys, this guy flew me to Miami for our like second date for like a vacation thing, and I'm pretty sure he ghosted me while we were here. Like he left. I have no idea why, and I really I know this sounds like naive i really don't think it was anything i did but tbd because i don't know why he left or when he left or how he, he drove but whatever we're gonna call him michael for the purpose of this story 
So yesterday, Michael was like, oh, I'm going to go get lunch with my sister really quickly. I haven't seen her in two years. I'll be back at noon. I was like, okay, cool. Just don't forget we have these hard to get lunch reservations at 1.30. He's like, yeah, I'll be back before then. So I went to the pool, minded my business, you know, soaking up the sun. At 1.10, I was like, hey, where are you? Like, don't forget about lunch. No answer. And then at 1.20, I said, where are you? Like, are you picking me up for lunch? Because he, he has his car here. Like, he drove a couple hours away from Tampa. And I was like, hey, like, where are you? Then I started getting really frustrated and I texted him something like, yo, this is just so disrespectful to me and my time and like blah, blah, blah. And he's like, hey, sorry to be non-responsive. I just found out some devastating news, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I'm a very um, caring person. I don't think that's the word, but oh, I'm a very trusting person. So I was like, oh yeah, like something happened, which to this to this time, I feel like something still happens. My friend don't think that something happened. Though. They're like, oh, he definitely has a secret wife. who was like, get your ass home. But it gets worse. I pushed the reservation back to two. He misses that reservation too. And like, this is before he told me he had this quote, devastating incident. And and so room service, or not room service, housekeeping, and I promise this is important, housekeeping ends up coming. And I was like, okay, like this is at 3.30, I think. I was like, you can come on in. And after they made the bed, I took a nap. And so obviously they cleaned the shower too, which is important. And as I'm getting ready to go hang out with some of my other friends, I was like, fuck this. And I think this is still before I knew what happened. Actually, I think I knew that there's this quote devastating event. And so then I look around and I look in the corner and I realize his stuff's not there. I was like, did he come get his stuff while I was taking a nap? Like that is so disrespectful. And there is the possibility that he possibly got it while I was at the pool and he was supposed to be home by noon and like all of that. Um, that could have possibly been when he got it, but I don't know because we're both very clean when we travel. So our stuff is like very compact. It almost looks like somebody's bedroom. But if he did get it while I was napping, that's disrespectful. And I noticed this morning when I was showering that there was a washcloth that was wet in there. I was like, did he get his stuff and then shower? Because housekeeping would have cleaned it up yesterday if he had showered before they came. And I was like, what the fuck? I was like, that would be so disrespectful. My friend's like, were you sleeping through all of this? I was like, yeah, I'm a tank. So not quite sure what's happening right now. Keep you guys updated. Um, I'm gonna go run up some room service. Anyway, here's the first of many pina coladas on his tab. Thank you. Here we go. Oh! <laughs> Great job. <laughs> well, I made it. Well, if you want to come out and have a- Females like this will never understand why men ghost them. First of all is they don't want to understand. And the second, reason is there's so many options and simps that they reject that they always have this belief there's going to be someone that they want that's also going to want her the way she wants him and a lot of times they don't want to also believe the reason why is true is because that will knock down a lot of these females confidence in the dating world it's coming to that reality that you are no longer respected in the dating market you are no longer wanted in the dating market you're not esteemed as a woman or a wife or traditional you're just seen as another 304 that men could fly you out do their deed and lead and to be honest a lot of females don't want to acknowledge this but it's the truth you think it's disrespectful a man doesn't owe you anything unless he has committed to you same way you don't owe him anything he doesn't owe you anything so if he got what he wanted that you gave to him that is what it is and that is exactly what happened in her case she finds it disrespectful because she didn't get what she wanted out of it but you gave him what he wanted and he didn't have to give you what you wanted and that's just what it is I'm your hostess, Reminit Princess. These are my last thoughts. Modern women hitting the wall really does highlight all the reasons why they hit the wall. And not all of them are always going to be the same, but there's always going to be the same results at the end. And that's what makes it even more interesting. Let me know what you think. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like comment and subscribe bye so i was dating this guy 
kind of rich and he asked me out of the blue would you date a struggling guy Mm -hmm. and i said no and he said you know to me you're the struggling guy i haven't healed yet (laughs) fam plot twist plot her world would have been rushed. she felt wined and dined and in that setting, yeah. she doesn't understand why she's being attacked. Yeah, yeah, fine. She doesn't understand. Fine. I'm just here for food and give you pussy. Fine. That's all I'm here for. All, all, all women hit the wall. No, no, no one cares.